Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All righty, hallelujah. Well, uh, Pastor called me this afternoon and said, How would you like to teach tonight? And I went, Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you've got to be instant in season and out of season. So, this is one of those in seasons. Praise the Lord. So, I thought what we'd do is a little different. Uh, we're going to do a little word study uh, of a single word. Now, there's, there, are, there are different ways to do studies in the Word of God. You can do a topical study where you pick a topic and then you study through the whole scripture about that given topic. You can do uh, a biblical exegesis of a given book, like say the book of James. We're going to take that book, we're going to go through the whole book. Um, or you can take a word or phrase and we can study it out in the Greek or the Hebrew and so forth and in various scriptures. And uh, I thought we'd do that with the word light. Light. So let's, uh, let's open in prayer and then we'll get started with our study. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come and receive from your word. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church, is, is active, and he is free here tonight to minister in any way he sees fit. And also, Father, that, uh, that he will guide us and direct us in everything we do, everything we say. We thank you, Father, that the people's hearts are attentive and that they're listening closely to your word. We know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, Father, we thank you for faith coming to us and receiving it, operating in it according to God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 1. This is called starting at the beginning. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. God said, let there be light. Well, we're talking about light. That's our topic, our subject. So right from the very beginning, God said, let there be light. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. This was the creation of the universe. This is the creation of everything. And I heard somebody teach one time, and I kind of like this. It's a very different approach, a very scientific approach. And that is, when you say light, you're not just saying a light that you, that's visible that you see. We're talking about the whole electromagnetic waveform spectrum. Everything that is a variant of light or a frequency of light. That would include, for instance, infrared, which we recognize as heat, or ultraviolet. So there's a whole range there. And actually, if you continue up that range, you get on into radiation of various kinds, gamma radiation, all kinds of different things. But basically, all are on that spectrum. So if you look at it that way, when God said, let there be light, he was actually saying, I'm just going to create the entire universe with one word. Because the Hebrew here, where it says, let there be light, is actually light in the present tense. He said the word light, but he said it in the present tense. Now, this is a great example of faith, because light didn't exist when he said it. Yet he said it as though it existed. For instance, if I were to go out and I'm, sit, I'm standing in the middle of nothing, this is where God was at. He was in the middle of nothing, with nothing in every direction, as far as you could not see, because there was nothing. <laughs> and it was dark. <laughs> and he said, light be. Well, it's like saying, I see a light, but there was no light. But he said, light be, and light was. So as soon as he said it, it came to pass. Well, as soon as he said, light be, the entire universe was thrown into existence. Now, the great thing about it is, from the point that he said light be, the universe sprang into existence at 186,000 miles a second or at the speed of light. From that single point, it went out. Now, the scientists today call that the Big Bang. It was actually the big confession. <laughs> Amen. God said, let there be light or light be, and here we go. We have everything that exists from that single point outward. So, let's look at a little, little more detail on this. Light in the Hebrew is actually, and, and I, I can't pronounce it precisely here, but it's actually O-R. It's, it's like we would say or, but I, I think it probably has a little different twist to the pronunciation there, or, I'm not sure, probably similar to what we get orb from with a B, but, so it's, it probably has a little bit of that in it. 
But that means illumination. It's the kind of light that you can see. It's light manifested. Or, this is what I like, luminary in every sense. In other words, it's light in every sense of the word. Now, let's think about some of the ways we can use the word light, for instance. We know when we see a light, like shining on me for the cameras, that's a form of light. But if I say something like, uh, yeah, I'm going to need to study that out because I need to get some light on that. Well, what do I mean by that? I need to get some revelation. I need to get some knowledge on whatever that is that I need light on. Well, light in that sense means to reveal or to illuminate. Okay? So there's a lot of ways you can use the word or term light. But I like that luminary in every sense. So it, it covers every sense. And that Hebrew word, I may have said Greek, I meant Hebrew. Hebrew word or or orb, <laughs> means illumination or luminary in every sense. Now, God saw the light, and it was good. Now, this word good is another Hebrew word. It's tobe. It means good in the widest sense. It's a very broad expression. Good in the widest sense. So this is very, very good, is what light was when God said light be. Then he went on to say, in Genesis 1-5, concerning the darkness. See, there's, there's an opposite to light, and that's darkness. Concerning the darkness, he said, the darkness he called night, which is yulal jil, if I'm pronouncing it anywhere close to right, in the Hebrew. And it means, now I really, I, this is cool, to twist away from the light. To twist away from the light. So imagine a creature, a being, that couldn't stand light. He would twist away from it. He would move away. See? Now, what creature do we know that enjoys darkness? <laughs> That's the devil. He doesn't like light. He is not a creature of light. And so he twists away from the light. It also figuratively means adversity. This word darkness. Darkness is adversity. Darkness is twisting away from the light. Now, picture light as revelation knowledge of God's Word, and darkness as not having revelation knowledge of God's Word. And remember, this is in the widest sense. So this is what we're talking about. Not only light, the electromagnetic waveform spectrum, but also light, like revelation knowledge. So let's keep going here. Psalm 109, verse 105. Thy Word, talking about the Word of God, because Psalm 109, that's its topic, is the Word of God. Thy word is a lamp, which would be a light, unto my feet, and a light unto my path. So God's word is light. Well, again, the devil twists away from that. <laughs> he, he likes to get away from the word. He twists away from the light. He's in darkness. Uh, let's look at John 12, 46. I'm just hitting a lot of different scriptures here, but we're going to be pulling information from each one of them. John 12, 46, I am come a light into the world. Let's talk about Jesus. Jesus is saying this. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Again, darkness referring to Satan. Darkness referring to a lack of revelation knowledge or lack of knowledge of God's word. Jesus said, I'm come to be a light. I'm here to bring light to the world. Acts 26, 23. That Christ should suffer and that he should be uh, the first that should rise from the dead and would show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Well, praise the Lord, I got in on that because I was a Gentile. Far as I know, I don't have any natural uh, Jewish blood. Maybe I do. That would be great. But even so, I was born, raised a Gentile. All right, but the light is unto the Gentiles as well. I got in on the fact that the Gentiles got in on the light, got to see the revelation of the light brought by Jesus. All right, uh, let's continue here. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world, that's the devil, hath blinded the minds, notice blinded, that means lack of light, right? Blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I like the fact that all the way through these scriptures as we see this, light... Natural light is a, uh, a foreshadowing of 
the kind of light he's talking about here are revelation knowledge. See, we are in the light. We're children of light. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's keep going. Try to stay on track here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Woo, right there. We can just camp a while. <laughs> because look at that. He came to give the light of the knowledge. Now, I like to dig in, as you know, all the Greek study and so forth. And there is a word that's translated knowledge. It's just plain old knowledge. Gnosis. That word is knowledge that I would acquire by reading. Knowledge I would acquire by study. What I know about computers, I've learned, and it's gnosis knowledge, okay? God wasn't really involved in my revelation concerning computers, all right? It was something that I picked up because of my interest and because of my reading. Not to say he hasn't helped me on occasion, because he has, but he didn't sit down one day and say, I'm going to just hit you with revelation knowledge concerning computers. He just never did that. That would be cool, but he didn't. All right, but then there's an epi, E-P-I, epignosis. Epignosis, and our pastor has tra translated it from the, the uh, Greek many times, a clear and precise knowledge. Another way of looking at that kind of knowledge, epic means above and beyond. Okay? Knowledge is a study or body of knowledge. So above and beyond a natural knowledge. See, I can have a natural knowledge of something, and that's gnosis, like computers. I can have epignosis, that's above and beyond my natural knowledge. And as I said, there have been occasions where I've gone to the Lord and said, Lord, help me with this situation. Help me figure this out. And he dropped something in my heart, revelation, that's epignosis, beyond my natural knowledge. And I go, oh, I see it now. No, I see it. You see light. Okay? So that's, that's what we're talking about here. So... As, he, as, he, as we read this, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now remember, Jesus said, I am come into the world to bring this light. Well, the light that he's talking about can be seen in his face. Now we have a, an incident that was reported from the scripture where Jesus went on top of the mount, you know, and he got glorified to the point that he glowed. And Peter and all the, the disciples kind of freaked out, and Peter's like, oh, let's build a tabernacle. You know, I mean, he didn't know what to do with that. But he saw that light. Pastor mentioned this morning about Moses. I think it was this morning. About Moses and how when he got close to God, the glory of God kind of got off on him. Amen? Got off on him to the point that they made him wear a veil over his face because they, didn't wanna, they, they felt uncomfortable in the presence of that light that glow, that light, that illumination. The glory of God is often represented as light or a glow or a light that comes. And that's what we're talking about here. This light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All right, 2 Corinthians six fourteen. This is kind of a, <laughs> as I said, we're just going through looking at verses concerning light. This is talking primarily about people being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He says, For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Or that would be Christians with the world. All right. And what communion hath light with darkness? Now again, notice that light is indicative of Christians, righteous folks. People have been made righteous with Jesus' righteousness in Him. And then unrighteousness is darkness, the world. Those that are under the rule and control of the God of this world are Satan. So there's a, there's a battle line being drawn there, or a differentiation being drawn there. All right, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel, talking about Satan, caused himself to be seen as an angel of light. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He can appear to be this glorious creature. And, and people have been confused by that. There are a lot of people who have started all kinds of false religions because they see some glowing, amazing, sparkling, divine-looking being, and it's really just Satan appearing as an angel of light. Again, light, darkness. Drawing that distinction. Ephesians 5.8 For you were 
us as believers, okay? B uh, before we became believers, we were unbelievers. And it says we were sometimes darkness. We used to be dark. But now are you light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. And that phrase, this is really what got me on this study, is this phrase, the children of light. We, as believers, are children of light. We have an affinity for the light. We draw, you might say, the light. Because light is revelation knowledge. We want to operate in that light. Not in the darkness. Matter of fact, we're to stay away from this darkness that's in this world. The Word of God even says that it's a shame for us to even speak of the things that are done in this world. We want to stay away from the darkness. We want to remain in the light. You were sometimes darkness, but now, believers, you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Ephesians 5, 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And we just see this over and over and over in the Scripture that God and the things of God and revelation from God is light. Things that are not of God, that are of the devil, are darkness. All right? Your children of light and children of the day. Verse, this is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. I think I skipped one, but we'll go back to it. 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. You're all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. That's pretty plain right there. We're not of the night, we're not of the darkness. That's not our identification. Colossians 1.12 is the one I skipped. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet, or able, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So, I mean, there's literally, there's like 275 scriptures that have, to, that have to, something to do with light. We're not going to look at every single one of them, so don't get concerned here. But I want to see a sampling here of these uh, scriptures that refer to light. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's see, 2 Timothy 1.10. I know I'm keeping Belinda busy back there on the, <laughs> on the thing to put it up on the screen. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.10, But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Again, Revelation of the gospel is light to us. 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you would show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Not just light, marvelous light. Amen. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 19. You also have a more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. This world is a dark place. But the gospel, the good news, is a light to the world until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Now look at all these symbols of light. Look at all these references to light. We see light. We see light abolishing darkness. I don't care how thick the darkness is in a room. Now, you know, I used to work in photography and back in the day, before digital uh, cameras, we had film cameras, and we had to work in a dark room. And I've had several dark rooms. I had one really, really nice one down, down at the lake at our house down there. And we built it, Dad and I, from scratch. And we built it in such a way it had baffles, it had all kinds of things to keep it truly dark. You get in there and close the door and, and put the, uh, we had a curtain kind of thing that hung there and so forth, and we flip a switch, and the switch would light up a bulb on the outside of the, the room with a big red bulb that said, if this bulb is on, do not open the door because we want to get light, uh, dark. So we had this dark room, completely dark. You could take high-speed film. You could pull that film out of the canister and it would not expose it because it was so dark. There was not a, even a leak of light in that dark room. But if you just struck a match, that one little match would dispel the darkness. I mean, it just it was like, by comparison with the darkness, it was like a, a searchlight. You could see the whole room from that one little match. 
And I always thought that was fascinating. The light dispelled the darkness no matter how dark that darkness is. No matter how thick. We've talked about that, boy, it was so dark, it was just thick, it was so dark. Well, that's a term we use, but basically there was no shred of light. But as soon as there was that tiny little amount of light, it illuminated the whole room. Well, it's the same way with the world. We are children of the light. When we go out into the world, we should be bringing light to that world, that dark world. No revelation for those folks. I mean, you listen to people on the news, and you listen to them talk about things, and it's obvious they have no revelation knowledge. They have no knowledge of the Word of God. They're completely confused and in the dark. We use that kind of terminology. They're in the dark. Well, certainly they are. If we were to go and sit down with them and say, well, let me show you what the Bible says and start shining forth some light of revelation knowledge, hopefully they got born again and turned on to the Word of God and so forth and the Holy Spirit started directing them, they would start understanding some things. They'd get some light on some things. Now, there are certain things that are in the Word of God that the natural man can't understand. The Bible says that. The natural man can't understand these revealed things from the Word of God. But that, that still doesn't mean we don't go and share the gospel with them because anybody can receive Jesus as Lord if they hear the gospel concerning him preached. And if they hear that, what comes? Faith comes by hearing that gospel. They receive Jesus. Well, once they do, then they can start getting some insight into some of these other things. Well, let's look at a couple more here. Let's look at uh, 1 John 1, 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light and in him, in God, is no darkness at all. So again, we're drawing this, this conclusion, this parallel, that God is light, we are children of light, we should not have anything to do with the darkness, and in fact, in God there is no darkness at all. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. We walk in the light. The revealed knowledge of the Word of God, literally, the light, as He is in the light, and we have fellowship one with another. Now let's look at 1 John 2, 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in Him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. And then the next verse, He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Praise the Lord. Again, light and darkness. Light and darkness. All right, uh, Revelation 9, or excuse me, 7, 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. Talking about these in the book Revelation. Revelation 18, 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and bride shall not be heard any more at all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries all the nations were deceived. In other words, the light's going to go out for some of these nations because they're going to be involved in sorceries. That's the interesting thing about the word sorcery in the book of Revelation. It's actually pharmakia, which is drug use related to Sorcery or witchcraft. In other words, there are drugs that are used. Well, you've heard of the Indians, you know, using peyote in their religious ceremonies. So it's interesting to see that these sorceries he's talking about also include that. Just kind of a side note. Revelation 21, 11, Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper, jasper stone, clear as crystal. And then uh, Revelation 21, 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So our, our end result, our end place <laughs> in heaven, is going to be lit by the Lamb, by Jesus, who is the light. That glory <laughs> is going to get turned up, praise the Lord, to where it will light the entirety of heaven. So we're going to be 
in that light. We're going to be in that glory. And in fact, right now, we have the glory of God in, in us. We have the light of God in us. And we should be sharing that as we come together and fellowship. I've been in on meetings where the glory came in as a cloud, seen it myself, and it was like a glowing almost cloud, a haze that came in. That's just a manifestation of the glory. I'm, I believe that in these last days we're going to see more of the glory. We're going to see more uh, manifestations. See, these are manifestations of things that already exist. I heard Keith Morris say something recently when he was teaching. He said, if you could see me in the spirit realm, as I preach the gospel, the words coming out of my mouth would be like light. It would be like light emanating from my mouth. Now, I thought that was a really interesting uh, kind of word picture because that's the way it is in the spirit realm. We don't see that in the natural, but it's there. You know, demonic forces, angels, see us differently than we see ourselves. We see ourselves as just, you know, yeah, body, comb or hair, etc. But they see us as children of light. They see us, you know, I, there's a story that Jerry Savelle tells uh, of an experience he had at a mall. He just, he went into the mall. He wasn't there to do anything spiritual. He wasn't there to have a meeting. He wasn't there to preach in the, you know, in the area there uh, of the mall where the food court was or whatever. I mean, he was just there shopping. And there was this lady that started following this light. And she's following the light. She see, see it go down this way and come down that way. She just started following the light. And when she finally came to Jerry, he was just standing there and she came up to him and said, tell me about the Lord. And he went, what? <laughs> and he just started sharing with her about the, the Word of God because she followed the light. Now that was a supernatural manifestation, but you know, there's going to be more of that happening. Supernatural manifestations of really just seeing into what's really already there. We are already children of light. We already are, you know, this is terrible to do, in a way to do this, but in Star Wars, Yoda said, luminous beings are we. <laughs> well, that's what we are, luminous beings. We're beings of light. Our spirit man is a being of light. And so in the, in the spiritual realm, we would be seen as children of light. God would be seen as, you know, when the, like when the burning bush was burning, light emanating from that burning bush. All of these references that we've seen talking about God being light, revelation being light, darkness being without revelation, darkness being the children of the devil, I mean, it's pretty clear, pretty clear. So I just thought this was an interesting study. Uh, you know, like I say, this is something that I, I did this afternoon with my Bible study tools, eSword and so forth, as I put this together. And I just felt like it would be uh, as interesting to you as it is to, to, to me about how many references there are to light. Light versus darkness. Light versus darkness, and that's where we're at. And of course today, more than ever, we're seeing darkness at work. We're seeing things, I mean, ISIS and all the mess that's going on is just uh, in the natural, hard to conceive of what they're doing. I mean, they're crucifying children because they come from Christian families. Just unbelievable evil, which emanates from that darkness within them. So, now, here's the thing. All those folks that die over there are martyrs to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, that... They're going to be in that glorious bandstand watching us in these last days. So praise the Lord. I mean, at least they went to heaven. Praise God. So, but at the same time, this is the world we're living in. It's a world of darkness right now. And more than ever, we need to turn the rheostat up. You ever play with a rheostat? <laughs> a rheostat is one of those switches that as you turn it, the light would get brighter. And then you could turn it down, it would kind of dim. And a lot of times I think we've got our, our rheostat turned down where the light's not as bright. We need to just go ahead and turn it all the way up and just be light to the world. Be the children of light that we are, praise the Lord. And I just believe that that will be uh, a tremendous blessing to the folks around you, to your family, to your co-workers and folks that you meet as they see that light of God in you. And be like Jerry Seville in that, uh, 
in that mall come up and say, can you tell me about God? There's just something about you. There's, just, there's something going on here. And they'll get interested in the light, praise God. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this tonight, very short and to the point, but praise the Lord, I just believe it is, is good information to have. Stirred my thinking to think of, of being a child of the light. And I really like that, praise God. I like that we are light in the Lord. Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.